Crews working through the night to contain flames that quickly spread on the city's south side. What that fire is looking like now. An Alabama church, the latest target for an active shooter. This as lawmakers on Capitol Hill look for a solution to gun violence. Details still ahead. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Two San Antonio police officers and one patrol car are showing signs of a wild night at a northeast side strip club. According to police, the officer suffered minor injuries in a fight with a man who was resisting arrest. It happened inside Diamond Show Club near Loop 410 in Perrin Vital. As Katrina Weber reports, the damage to the patrol car came from a different commotion outside. San Antonio police officers flooded into the area near Loop 410 in Perrin Vital, ready to help two of their own in trouble. They say a man wanted on a warrant and who had just violated a protective order committed another crime inside Diamond Show Club around 3.30 this morning fighting with the officers trying to arrest him. They eventually took him down with a taser. The two officers also suffered minor injuries. Outside though, police say another man caused major damage to one of their cars. They arrested the suspected drunk driver whose truck slammed into their car on the access road. All of it happening at the same time had officers scrambling to cover the crazy scene. Police say this was the second night in a row they had trouble at this club. They say in the previous incident, they arrested a woman who punched and used pepper spray on a security officer here. In fact, records show it has been a busy six months. Police have answered more than two dozen calls here since January, 11 of them involving assaults or disturbances. This time around at the strip club, Police got a two for one deal. One call that ended with two arrests. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This noon, police are still on the hunt for a man who sent a guy to the hospital in an attempted robbery. According to police, the victim was just walking to check his mail overnight when the suspect ran up and tried robbing him. When the victim refused to give up anything, the suspect stabbed him at least three times in the stomach. This happened at apartments in the 3400 block of Fredericksburg. That's not too far from I-10 and Vance Jackson. It was a long, drawn-out process to fight a massive fire that tore through a dry field on the city's south side last night. It came dangerously close to some homes, and it posed a potential risk of an explosion, too. Jonathan Goto reports Bear County fire crews stepped in to assist providing brush trucks and manpower, but ultimately it was just the weather that played a role in containing these flames. An intense situation for San Antonio firefighters as flames quickly spread out over 200 acres in this field of hay bales and thick mesquite. Crews were called out to this field located on the city's south side off of Roosevelt just outside Loop 410 shortly after 7 p.m. Thursday. Video images from San Antonio Police Department's helicopter shows just how far and fast the fire was able to spread. Well, we were able to get crews here so quickly on scene and keep that fire from going into any of the neighborhoods. Um, there are a couple of new neighborhoods to the, the far west flank of the fire that are under construction. Um, doesn't appear anyone is living in that area yet because it's a new, brand new de development. And not only did the flames inch their way near homes, but also this facility where we know jet fuel and diesel is being stored. Now crews say the facility activated its fire suppression system, keeping this area protected. But really, they're just thankful that weather conditions helped keep this fire from spreading. Fortunately, as the sun went down tonight and the wind died down, the humidity came up. It slowed the growth of the fire and it allows us to get in there overnight and work on getting it out from continuing to move. Though no injuries were reported, the flames did manage to destroy several junkyards and boats that were along the fiery path. Crews say the main focus was keeping the flames from spreading north and reaching more homes, gas stations, and hotels. Fire officials say the cause of the fire appears to be accidental, starting as a result of sparks that kicked up while mowing. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Now to another act of gun violence in this country. This time at a church in Alabama, police say a gunman opened fire, killing two people and injuring another. This as negotiations continue on Capitol Hill as a bipartisan group of senators try to draft a gun reform legislation bill. ABC's Rena Roy has details on another terrifying shooting that's happened in the country. A church gathering becoming yet another tragedy caused by gun violence in the U.S. Active shooter situation 
multiple patients at this time, at least three patients. Pain is not secure. Police say two people were killed and another was injured. The victims are being identified as Walter Rainey, white male, age 84. Sarah Yeager, white female, age 75. When a gunman opened fire inside St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Vestavia Hills, Alabama. Occasional attendee of the church that I will only identify as a white male, aged 71, was at the dinner. At some point, he produced a handgun and began shooting, striking three victims. Authorities arresting the suspect on the scene. Shooter's been held down. They've got the shooter restraint. This can't be happening. It's right next to me. I'm so sad. I'm I'm so prayerful for the families that be, was affected by this. I think our whole church family will be affected by this. I'm just in shock and disbelief. This is just the latest act of gun violence in this country following the supermarket shooting in Buffalo and the Robb Elementary School massacre in Uvalde, the last of 21 victims being laid to rest today in the small Texan town. Meantime, Senate negotiators working behind closed doors to draft legislation on gun reform, hoping to come to an agreement this weekend. There are a couple of issues that uh, need to be settled. That bipartisan group of senators is working on drafting a number of proposals aimed at curbing gun violence, including strengthened background checks, restrictions for convicted abusers, school security, and mental health programs. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Happening today in Uvalde, another day of testimony as the Texas Legislative Committee investigates the deadly shooting at Robb Elementary. They're expected to hear from police, both with Uvalde CISD and the city of Uvalde's. Yesterday, the Texas House Committee heard from several employees within Uvalde CISD, including a custodian, the principal for Robb Elementary, and the district superintendent. But details on what was said were not released. The hearings were closed to the media and the public, aside from opening and closing statements. The Uvalde County District Attorney says that Texas Rangers and FBI are leading a separate investigation. She believes that'll take six months, likely longer, before it gets to her office office to be reviewed. Nine months after its musicians went on strike, the San Antonio Symphony is closing its doors. Despite the ongoing labor negotiations, the board announcing yesterday that it will file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy and dissolve the symphony. The Symphony San Society of San Antonio and the local chapter of the American Federation of Musicians both struggled to strike a deal at issue finding a way to provide competitive wages while also addressing the financial struggles they've been experiencing for years. While it's very sad that such a proud organization with such a long history has ended in this way, uh, the intent of the founders of the Symphony Society of San Antonio will be carried forward by the musicians. The chair says the group still intends to play concerts this fall so how did we get here? You can find out. Our award-winning Case That Explained series has a closer look at the San Antonio Symphony and the musician strike. You can watch it right now on KSAT.com or our free KSAT Plus app. And we have a new but very familiar NBA champion. The Warriors pulled off the win against the Boston Celtics. The highlights still ahead in sports. Plants aren't just something pretty to look at. They've got a lot of benefits to them as well. After the break, Tiffany Huerta shows us how poison can also be medicine. It's something she learned in the Witty's newest exhibit. Harming and Healing, a new interactive exhibit at the Witty Museum explores how poison can do both of those things. Families can step into a Colombian rainforest and learn about poisonous animals and plants there. Tiffany Huertas has a look inside. Paula is one of my favorite residents here at the Whitty Museum. Paula is a Texas brown tarantula. You can find them throughout the state, and you can meet Paula at the Whitty Museum's newest exhibit, The Power of Poison. She lives here all the time, and like many of the animals in this exhibit, is also a venomous animal. At this exhibit, you can travel through the Colombian rainforest. And you have the opportunity to explore uh, venom and poison in nature. And you can also learn how poison can heal. Poison that helps heal. Uh, some of the diseases and scientists moving forward with using some of these venoms to create hopefully cures 
for some of these uh, ailments. This exhibit also has this enchanted book that explains poisonous plants and flowers with stories of how they've been used. To have the opportunity to be such an immersive experience that really puts you in the heart of some of these stories. The exhibit will be open until Labor Day. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with live cam. It's a cool front, cold front. It's a something front compared to yesterday. Hey, below 90? We'll take that after what we've been seeing. You know, it was interesting this morning. I don't know if you were out early enough, but we did have somewhat lower humidity. I mean, just by a little bit, but we'll take anything, of course, with all this heat out there. And look at that picture over my shoulder with all that nice orange. You can just kind of see some of that dust still hanging around here. At least that's going to be going away. What about the hot temperatures? Details coming up in just a couple of seconds. All right, it's Friday. We're not at 90 yet. <laughs> this is and, great. And the humidity is down or was down this morning. So and the, and the, the dust good news is coming. going away. <laughs> the dust will be yes. finally getting on. I still have some of it left over today. So I don't know about y'all, but a couple of days ago, I don't know if it was when the big surge came in or what, it was almost like I just couldn't clear my throat. Yeah, I, yeah. I felt like I had something goofy yeah, going I mean, on in my mouth. I'm thinking of, like, a, of a rap song. Uh, let me clear my throat. <clears throat> no? No? You know, it... <laughs> A swing and a miss on that one. Can, it's okay. can you hum a few bars on that one? So, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like we get mountain cedar, then we get oak, now we got dust to deal with. Anyway, take a closer look at that picture. And Mark Austin this morning summed it up. What does that remind you of? Think of movies. Um, out Think, of Africa? Uh, more sci fi. Oh. Tatooine from Star Wars. Oh, that is. Ah. A Doesn't it look like that? Or it's like you're on Mars or something. We're just, we're just Padawans. That's the problem. We didn't know. We didn't get that one yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. That's it. He's good. So, all right. Right now, uh, you can see a little bit of the haze out there. This is the airport uh, camera looking toward downtown. There's the Tower of the Americas. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like the previous picture, but there's a little bit of that hanging around out there. The sunset is going to obviously show that. You get more vivid sunsets with all this, uh, all the, the dust in the air. Right now, now we are at 87 degrees, 89 Balverde, 88 Converse, Port SA, and Castroville, and Comfort. Well, and Gonzales. Let me keep adding to these. Are the only ones in the 90s as of right now. Dew point temperatures again. The measure of moisture in the atmosphere are definitely down from yesterday. Yesterday morning, especially, we were in the uh, 71 to 73 degree range, even some 74s. And this morning, most of the readings were well down in the 60s. And even down in the low 60s, out in portions of the hill country. So yes, it was more comfortable out there. We do have a slight bit of a heat index to deal with right now. 93 Pleasanton, 90 is what it feels like out there at the airport, and also 93 in New Braunfels. But we will continue with that usual cycle where the humidity is lower in the afternoon. So we're not going to have just outrageously high heat index readings, maybe a, a couple of degrees above the actual air temperatures. But we are going to continue to warm up through the 90s and get up to 100 again today. So this will be day number 16, just in case you're keeping track. And then going through this evening, obviously things will start to, I don't know if I can say cool down. Just be not as hot. I mean, because we're still 93 is the normal high temperature, and we'll still be right around that just into the early evening hours, then getting down into the uh, 80s later on tonight, and should be a fairly uh, pleasant evening. All right, there's one little, I don't want to call it a fly in the ointment because it would be nice if it happened, but this computer model wants to scare up a shower or two or three later on this evening. Very few and far between. I don't really have a lot banking on this at all. I mean, kind of a mention of it just looking at this model, and that would be the uh, about the extent of it. But if it happens, great. We'll get one or two of those showers. Don't count on it at all. So the forecast, we again are going to be uh, right around the low 90s as we go into the afternoon hours and then getting up to 100 later on this afternoon. And yet we are going to keep the triple digits around here for the next few days next week to be exact. And yeah, it's going to be hot over the weekend. So if you are going to be doing anything outdoors celebrating Father's Day, Juneteenth, whatever the case may be, uh, just take it easy. Lots of water, lots of shade, if at all possible. And oh, by the way, I don't think anybody cares. Summer starts Tuesday. Yeah. 
Summer started in We're May. We're not even there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only thing significant about it is, okay, that's the longest day of the year, so days get shorter after that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll enjoy the two days before summer. I think then. everyone thinks summer. Yeah. We're in midsummer like, at this point. Yeah. Surprise, Texas yeah. is just preheating a little bit. Yeah. It's a definition of a moot point. Yes, <laughs> alternative fact. Thanks for that, Mike. It was a special night at Wolf Stadium last night. Still ahead, how the players and fans honored the lives lost in Uvalde. Plus, we're going to hear from some of the Warrior players after their big win last night in the NBA Finals. A big congratulations to Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. They've won their fourth title in eight years. Here's a look at some of the celebrations outside. We'll show you that here in a minute. But they were celebrating outside of the Chase Center in San Francisco even before the clock hit zero because the Warriors, guess what? They won convincingly. Now let's take a look at some of the highlights. Jason Tatum and the Celtics were 3-0 and this postseason when facing elimination, trying to make it 4-0 and force a Game 7 on Sunday back in Golden State. Tatum drives, pulls back, and hits the jumper at the elbow, and the Celtics are up 12 early. But the battle-tested Warriors fight back, Draymond Green in the corner for his first three of the entire series. Then Jordan Poole banks home this three, and the Warriors close the quarter on an 11-0 run to go from being down 12 to be up by five, a huge 17-point uh, swing. The Warriors' run continued in the second off the Jalen Brown turnover. Andrew Wiggins throws down the jam, extending the run to 21-0, the longest scoring run in the finals in 50 years. Warriors up 54-39 at the half. And in the finals, teams that are up by 15 or more at the half are 53-1. That wasn't enough. The Warriors hit their first six shots of the third quarter, and they were all three-pointers. Curry accounted for three of those six, and this one gives the Warriors their largest lead of the game so far at 22. But the Celtics show signs of life. Al Horford gets it down low and puts it up and in. Count the bucket and the foul. Boston goes up on a 16-4 run. It's only a 10-point Warriors lead going into the fourth. Jalen Brown connects on this three, bringing the lead down to eight. But Steph, Chef Curry, looking for his first finals MVP, says not so fast. Fastening a three and going six for 10 from downtown, scoring 32 points. The final 103 90, and Curry takes the Bill Russell MVP award. This win gives Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and head coach Steve Kerr their fourth title together since 2015. This one hits different for sure. Just knowing what the last three years have meant, what, it, what it's been like <clears throat> from injuries to you know, changing on the guard and the rosters, wigs coming through, our young guys carrying the belief that we could get back to the stage and win, even if it didn't make sense to anybody when we said it. All that stuff matters, and now <clears throat> we got four championships. It's like, man, it feels good. It feels amazing. Um, you put in so much work, so much time to make it here. And, you know, the end result is becoming a champion, you know, so there's nothing like it, you know, so now I'm going to celebrate like crazy. For us, it's just about getting back to these moments and, and, and winning, and we know what that feels like, and ultimately uh, we know what that takes. Please stop making the noise, big man. This one definitely a meaningful win for the group, an aging core squad who overcame many injuries this season and in the past few years. And again, Curry finally getting that elusive finals MVP. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. I think the biggest thing is, you know, you have a starting line and a finish line. I, I just felt like we crossed the finish line, you know, particularly with the veterans. That was Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy's explanation today as to why he canceled the final day of his mandatory minicamp and turned the day two into a group dynamic session, also known as a trip to Top Golf. But as we are finding out tonight, there is more to the story. The NFL is fining McCarthy $100,000. The team will lose an organized team activity workout in 2023. After it was determined that McCarthy allowed his players to become too physical during this year's OTAs. That's according to the NFL Network. No contact is allowed during offseason workouts according to the NFL and Players Association's collective bargaining agreement. But this is the second time McCarthy has been fined for just that. Last year, he was forced to pay a $50,000 fine and the team an additional 100 grand after allowing contact during drills. As a result, the Cowboys also lost an OTA workout this year. 
And Cowboys owner Jerry Jones stating empathetically today that there will not be another NFL team moving into Dallas. Jones' statement to the Dallas Morning News comes on the heels of Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson's invitation to the now Los Angeles Chargers to move to South Dallas. That's after a brother and sister fight looms over the ownership of the team. The mayor stating it's his job to grow the city's economy and that the region loves football so much it could certainly support a second team. Jones's response, you can't reset assured that you can't rest assured that you would not have the NFL supporting another team because of the kind of value that the game and the NFL receives of having the Dallas Cowboys as one of its marquee teams. And again, logic tells you the NFL wouldn't want to answer or would have watered that down. And remember, many believe the reason San Antonio doesn't have an NFL team of its own is because of the popularity of the Cowboys in the Alamo City. And speaking of Jerry, his Cowboys home AT&T Stadium will be one of the host sites of the World Cup soccer in 2026. FIFA, the governing body of international soccer, releasing that information today. That also includes NRG Stadium in Houston and three sites in Mexico, Guadalajara, Monterrey and Mexico City. Last night, a special moment on the field at Nelson Wolf Stadium. The San Antonio Missions baseball team wore custom maroon jerseys in honor of Uvalde. And that's not all. Camilia Juarez tells us the fans at the game also did something for the victims. The stands were full of maroon, and so was the field. The San Antonio Mission sporting the Uvalde High Coyote jersey. Well, to come together kind of like this and raise, raise a lot of money for families that are hurting right now, um, I think it's going to go a long way. Each jersey going home with the highest bidder. The proceeds going to the Rob Memorial Fund. He loves that jersey. Robert Balderas bid on the number 12, the same number his nephew played under while on the team. He's had that number for a long time, and especially what happened you know, over there with the kids. Um, he, he holds it true to his heart, so I'm trying to win it for him. Adam Lozano from Uvalde, she also bid on number 12. That's the number she met her high school sweetheart in. She wants to win it for her now husband. You'll be excited. We love, I mean, it was hard to find our colors growing up, so it's nice to see them, you know, the outpouring of love. One teacher, Tom Hugan, says he's only looking to support Uvalde, but winning a jersey would be a nice plus. I, even though I'm looking at possibly being the only one to bid on it, I bid more than the minimum bid because that's the right thing to do. And that's what many people did, including missions manager Philip Wellman. He donated $10,000 for his own jersey on behalf of his church. And the auction for the other jerseys had a total of over $10,000. And they're still counting the donations from the audience. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. To Washington and the fallout from the House Select Committee's third public hearing presenting the findings into the January 6th insurrection. Yesterday's proceedings focused on former President Trump's efforts to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to block the certification of the 2020 election. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more of that testimony from several lawyers and aides working for Trump and Pence's own advisors who spoke of that pressure and the danger Pence was in. In their third public hearing, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riot, outlining the danger former Vice President Mike Pence was in after rejecting Donald Trump's repeated requests that he block the certification of Joe Biden's Electoral College victory. Mike Pence is not going to reject. Showing the mob who had already breached the Capitol, reacting to Trump's tweet that Pence lacked the courage to stop the certification. Pence came, we're gonna drag <laughs> through the streets. The committee revealing Pence came within 40 feet of rioters before he was rushed to this secure loading dock underneath the Capitol. Did Donald Trump ever call the vice president to check on his safety? He did not. The committee also read claims from an informant in the Proud Boys who said they would have killed Pence and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi if they had found them. Make no mistake about the fact that the vice president's life was in danger. Former Judge Michael Luddick saying the country came close to losing its democracy. Would have been the first constitutional crisis since the founding of the Republic. John Eastman, the conservative attorney who drafted the Trump campaign's plan to overturn the election, tried to rationalize his thinking to the vice president's legal counsel. And he said, absolutely. Al Gore did not have a basis to do it in 2000. 
Kamala Harris shouldn't be able to do it in 2024, but I think you should do it today. Later, Eastman allegedly asked Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani for help in securing a presidential pardon. The committee's next hearing is Tuesday, focusing on state and local officials who stood up to pressure from Trump and his supporters to overturn the election results. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. We now know the names of the three confirmed American fighters who have been reported missing in Ukraine. 39-year-old Alexander Druk and 27-year-old Andy Hinn from Alabama are believed to be the men in a photo posted by a Russian blogger that shows them with their hands tied behind their backs in a Russian military truck. The veterans were reportedly in Ukraine to help train fighters and haven't been heard from since last week. The State Department hasn't confirmed whether this photo is real, but they acknowledge that two Americans are missing. The third man is Grady Kapersi. He's a former Marine and went to Ukraine back in March. A family friend says he did not plan to fight, but ended up manning an observation post near Kherson. That friend says he was last heard from on April 26th. The United States has discussed the issue with British partners and the International Committee of the Red Cross, but have not been in contact with Russian officials. We are now one step closer to getting the nation's youngest children access to COVID-19 vaccinations. It's been a long process, but today the Food and Drug Administration officially approved emergency use for Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines for kids at least six months old. The move still needs some approval from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which is supposed to happen on Saturday. It's expected to pass since CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky has already signed off on this recommendation. Now it's time to take a look at live cam. Looks like a pretty clear day out there. Not too many clouds that I can see, unless my eyes are deceiving me. Yeah, a couple of them out there. Maybe some of that haze, not only from some moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, but from a little bit of that uh, Saharan dust. You can almost kind of see that, but a hint of kind of orangey looking out there. And temperatures right now, we are in the mid upper 80s and low 90s around much of the area. 87 out there at the airport, and it's going to be a uh, scorcher today. It already is. Dew point, that's not bad. 67 degrees. Now, kind of good news, bad news situation where, yes, the humidity is lower, a little more comfortable, but of course, dry air heats up more easily than moist air does. We have pretty good visibility out there as well. As far as the aquifer, did drop down half a foot in uh, yesterday's reading and the allergens. We do have mold and pigweed both on the low side. Long holiday weekend coming up forecast in just a couple of minutes. And this weekend, many Americans will celebrate what is considered America's real Freedom Day. Sunday, Sunday marks Juneteenth. The federal holiday commemorates the emancipation of enslaved people. It originated back in 1865. It's been celebrated ever since. Locally, those festivities are actually already underway. Alicia Barrera caught up with the commissioner of the annual Juneteenth Festival for a little preview. On June 19, 1865, Union General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston Bay to proclaim all slaves were free. The slavery industrial complex that would put humans, men, women, and children in captivity, enslavement, it's so important to be able to get the independence and to be able to have freedom. And while it may be a new federal holiday, Juneteenth is rooted deep in the history of the U.S. and even here in San Antonio. Actually, the festival has been going on since 1866. What's great is that it's free. <laughs> Did I say free? Free. <laughs> free. Free as those folks were in 1865. San Antonio's Juneteenth Festival and Family Reunion is a three-day celebration focused on community and awareness of the progress made by African Americans for all people. Sure. I'd like for people to bring a thirst of knowledge and a thirst for drink and food because it's going to be a lot of great food. Uh, Friday we have uh, fish fries, Saturday we have a major barbecue plate dinner. And then on Sunday, what's going to be exciting is going to be Church in the Park, uh, which um, Mama D and Gary Givens will be uh, promoting and establishing, and it's going to be very nice. It's a weekend of fun that represents the commitment for equity and inclusion for all Americans. You know, America is not a perfect country, but with all its imperfection, it strives for perfection. And we're hoping that um, we can be part of making it right for everybody. I'm Alicia Barrera. 
Now, if you're interested in heading out to the festival this weekend, we have all the details on our website, kset.com slash Juneteenth. There you'll find ways in which to celebrate the holiday, like visiting special exhibits around town, or even to watch some movies that tell the story. This Juneteenth story first aired on KSAT News Now earlier today. It's our bite-sized streaming newscast and daily podcast. Alicia and RJ host It's a Weekdays. It's on at weekdays at 11 a.m. So if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to tune in on Monday on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Get ready to take a peek in your medicine cabinet. Thousands of bottles of ibuprofen are being recalled along with acetaminophen and aspirin. We have details just ahead. And we get a preview of a box office debut and details on why the voice of a familiar face isn't the one we might recognize. And everyone feeling some pain at the pump, but T-Mobile customers could see a little bit of relief. We'll explain how coming up. Two popular drug stores now recalling some medicines that most people have in their cabinets already. The Consumer Product Safety Commission recalling more than 400,000 bottles of acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and aspirin. So there's nothing wrong with the medication itself. The problem is with these bottles. They don't meet standards for child resistance. That means a child could open them up and accidentally ingest the medications that are inside. All of the bottles are branded either by Walgreens or Kroger. The specific bottles covered under the recall are listed on the CPSC's website as well as Kroger and Walgreens websites. Hope we get that figured out because this next story might be a bit of a headache. With no relief in sight for rising gas prices, T-Mobile is hoping to help its customers save at the pump. The wireless carrier is taking 25 cents off a gallon for its customers at Shell stations. This will likely be attractive to people hitting the road for vacation as today's national average for gas is $5 even, according to AAA. T-Mobile also has perks for those making a getaway plan by it's handing out free streaming and Wi-Fi on flights. These offers are scheduled to start June 21st. It's like Christmas in July. Once again, if you are ready to shop some good deals, Amazon just announced its annual Prime Day sales. Mark your calendars. It's July 12th and 13th. The big sale will kick off at 3 a.m. It's going to run for 48 hours in multiple countries, including for the very first time Poland and Sweden. You're going to be able to save on electronics, toys, stuff for the house, clothes, and a ton of other stuff. It's a big deal for deal hunters, and Amazon says it's a way to build some loyalty with customers who already have Prime and get some new people to sign up. During last year's Prime Day, online sales, or rather online spending, topped more than $11 billion and more than 6% over 2020. All right, taking a look outside live cam. Not exactly that yellow, hazy look that uh, Tatooine that Mike mentioned earlier, <laughs> but, but it's still a little hazy. Yeah, you know, you can almost see it just, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, hmm, funny color to that sky somewhat out there. We are gonna talk about the uh, dust, which is gonna be going away, finally. But is the heat going to be going away? We'll talk about the long weekend coming up here, long holiday weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. If you're just a weather enthusiast, where can you learn about weather? Well, this podcast still is still a little bit And then also, we are doing a fun episode. Well, they're all, okay, they're all fun. All right, let's get to the questions. Cool. We could be here all day, but we won't. Um, all right. So, question from Al Williams. So I hear a lot about the Saharan dust. What is it and can it be dangerous? First of all, Al, thanks for listening to us all the way out in Phoenix. Right. We knocked out the Saharan dust questions three in one. Boom. Told you I was going to be from all over the place today. She wanted only you two to answer this. <laughs> Cody asks, what's the hardest thing about being a meteorologist? We say there's a chance for rain. I think in some people's minds that means it's definitely going to rain. It's just not that simple. I wish y'all could, see, and y'all can't see what <laughs> Katie's doing here, so watch the video. Did they ask, like, the, anyone, a local meteorologist, if they that should've. was the right thing to say? So if you're a meteorologist, you get to say, it's going to rain. You got to throw out a percentage, but also what I learned, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you say there's 20% chance, that means there will be rain, but only in 20% of the viewing area. 
No, um, I was false. No. Don't believe what I say. It's it's you have a 20 percent chance of seeing rain because if there was. 20% of the area got rain, that would be 100% chance for that area and zero for the rest of them. Got it, got it. So, so right now we're so, at zero for everybody? So think, <laughs> basically, <laughs> think of it as if, if we all had a little paper bag and there were uh, 10 ping pong balls in there, and two of those, though, were red. So we each have a 20% chance of picking a red ping pong ball. That's if it, very well put. If there it was go. only... 30% of us, which would be one of us, or 33% of us, then I would have all red ones and you would have all white ones. So, yeah, it's just uh, the, the chance. And, and that's then we, why you know, sometimes say a better chance in this area or down by the coastal plain or something like that, qualify it like that. But, and that's why yeah. he's a meteorologist. So it's, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, when somebody doesn't get the rain, they get angry about it. And everybody's getting angry about not getting any rain right now. And we are in a weather pattern that just is not going to be changing anytime soon. And there we have yeah, kind of those hazy conditions. And a couple of things. First of all, visible satellite picture. Here's some of these uh, clouds coming in here, pulling in from the, uh, the southeast, as you would expect. And then upstairs from that, the water vapor imagery. And this shows some of that, you know, you get sort of that milky shade to the sky sometimes. If this was completely dark, dark gray and or even that sort of tannish color that'd be really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. But we do have some moisture aloft, so that's helping with sort of that uh, again, the milky shade of the sky. Then we've got some of the Saharan dust on top of that. And uh, you know, the, the question being in that that promo for the uh, whatever the weather with Sarah and with Katie, is it dangerous? Well, I mean, if you have any sort of uh, breathing issues, anything like that, any sort of particulates in the air, which is what this is, is probably not good for you. One nice thing is forecast is for this to start to go away over the next couple of days, although by the middle of next week, it looks like we may see another plume of some of that uh, Saharan dust trying to work its way on in here. Temperatures will continue to warm up. Obviously, we're going to make it up to 100 later on today. Lots of sunshine, sort of that, uh, again, milky shade to the sky or a little bit of veiled sunshine, if you will, at times. And then sun sunset will be kind of spectacular, if you will, because of some of the uh, that Saharan dust out there. And uh, there's a small chance one or two of those showers, maybe very small percentage chance, less than 10% for one of those to, uh, to pop up then later on today. So as far as the forecast, again, we're going to make it up to 100 later on. Hazy sunshine out there and triple digits all the way through the weekend. Father's Day, Juneteenth, of course, get the extended weekend on Monday and Tuesday, first day of summer, begins early on in the morning, which, again, just looking at those numbers, it really doesn't matter all that much. That is the, obviously, summer solstice, the longest day of the year. The sun reaches its highest point north of the uh, equator and then works its way back down to the south. But then, ironically, as the days get shorter, hottest time of the year, historically, is August. Just thought I'd throw that in there, you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> back to y'all. This weekend at the box office, we see the return of a familiar face, sorta. Buzz Lightyear is back, but if you're wondering why Tim Allen doesn't voice the classic Toy Story character in the Space Rangers new movie, there's a reason for that. And CNN's Rick Damagella will tell us why. Buzz Lightyear mission log, stardate 3901. Lightyear is described as the movie which Toy Story's Andy saw in theaters before receiving his Buzz action figure. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Coming Star Command. Why don't they answer? Talking action figures generally are not voiced by their big screen performers. I have Captain America dolls out there that have someone else's voice. And so you say, OK, I guess it's OK if our voices aren't the same. This character is supposed to be the human version of that toy. So when we when we do these iconic lines, you know, whether it's to infinity beyond or, you know, you're mocking me, you're <laughs> mocking me, aren't you? Whatever those lines are, you're allowed to take Tim Allen's performance and, you know, kind of steal from it and just say, listen, it's, it's supposed to be in the same vein. And, and I'd almost be a fool not to. Buzz's co-stars include a talking robot cat. Hello, Buzz. Ah! I am Socks, your personal companion robot. My what? When I first went into Pixar and they showed me all the little drawings of the different characters and I saw Socks and I was like, that's going to be the one. That's going to steal this movie. And a Hollywood veteran making his animation debut as Zerg. I got hired because I had done some voiceover work just before that, and they heard it. And uh, uh, I've been trying for years to do a voiceover job just to 
do it, see what it was like, you know. I'd always been told, you know, you should do voiceover work, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've tried. To infinity and beyond. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. A year is the first Disney Pixar film to debut exclusively in theaters since the start of the pandemic. The movie should be available on Disney Plus sometime between July 29th and August 5th. All right, SA Live is about to start, and we have one big question for you, Fiona. Mm. You. What's Mike going to be doing on the show today? He's busy right now. I know, and you know, Father's Day weekend is here, so it's time to celebrate that number one guy in our lives, right? So I have a stand in here who may or may not be a little bored. Ah, uh, get it? I don't have Mike here to laugh at my jokes, but don't worry, we've also got some great barbecue for dad this weekend because you can't go wrong with that. And Denise Cabello, of course, from Barbecue Smokehouse is here to show us what's on the menu this weekend. And there's something bonus for dad, right? Exactly. So if you just now realized that Father's Day is this weekend, thanks to Fiona, you didn't get dad a present, don't worry. Take him out to Barbecue. We've got plenty of delicious food and a freebie for dad. We're not gonna tell you what it is yet. You gotta watch, right? All right. And I'll um, laugh at your jokes too. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, and guess what? If you need a last minute dessert for dad, Gigi's cupcakes are here. All right, so we are going to tell you how you can score some of those for the last minute. And of course, in our shout out today, go ahead and send us some pictures of the dads in your life at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. You might see them in the show. It is going to be a busy weekend in San Antonio. We already mentioned the big Juneteenth Festival at Comanche Park, but there's also going to be lots of pride, pride events happening. The first annual River Parade and festivities down at La Vita. The San Antonio Zoo also announced its first ever Pride Week. It kicks off tomorrow with night out at the zoo, an after hours party with drag reformers, music, vendors and more. Be sure to check out all the details on KSAT.com. Going to any events this weekend? Boy, make sure lots of water, lots of shade because it is just going to stay very hot. Some clouds in the morning and then triple digits in the afternoon all the way through the first day of summer on Tuesday, which I don't know, really yeah. doesn't kind of yeah. matter this year. Kind of a moot point, like yeah, we said. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, <laughs> we're already halfway through summer in our minds. Ho hopefully, that cut out of Caskey doesn't eat all that barbecue down there before I get down there. I don't know. You know, he's a big barbecue. He was, he was so. eyeing those cupcakes. The cupcakes, yeah. yeah. That's all of our show for now. From all of us here at KSAT, thanks for joining us. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, well, hello and happy Friday. Not only Friday, but we're going into a Father's Day weekend on this Friday. And I've got, oh, 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 oh. I've, you know, I do have a meteorologist for a co-host typically, so um, I'm glad I have a stand-in meteorologist today for me. Ba -da -bing. That is the flat Stanley version of Mr. Adam Kasky, and I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, Father's Day is almost here, and you know, I, I'm sure Adam would agree. We want to see your photos. So let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Give that shout out to the dads in your life. We would love to see them, and you may see them a little later. All right, are you ready for some barbecue? Yes, he is. All right, well, this weekend, it's time to celebrate the number one guy in our lives. So how about a great meal for dad and scoring him something for free? Denise Camayo from Barbecue to Smokehouse is here to show us what's on the menu this weekend and, of course, what they are giving away to every dad. You hear that? Every dad. <laughs> something that he can enjoy. So yeah. welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay. I brought you plenty of goodies. <gasps> Love it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and here's the thing, guys. I mean, Father's Day is this weekend. Mm -hmm. If you just are realizing that, we've got you covered at Barbecue because we have so many delicious things on the menu. Fiona, shall we start yes. with these really yummy? Look at those ribs. So we do our ribs St. Louis spare rib style. Check how big those things are. 
Those are fit for dad for sure. I mean, I mean they're I'm fit gonna for. I'm going to compare it. Like, how does that? <laughs> I think he's smiling about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it smells great, right, he's, Adam? Yeah, yeah. They, he loves to grill. Okay, <laughs> they, we'll, we'll do the grilling for you. I, I was looking at my husband and I was thinking, oh, he usually does the cooking, but it's my turn this weekend. <laughs> I don't like to cook, so I'm just going to stick with barbecue. -tie. Our ribs are extra juicy, extra saucy. They're delicious, but of course we've got the full menu. We've got sausage, delicious brisket. We've got chicken. Any side you can imagine, we've got it all for you there. So just head out to Barbecue and we'll do the cooking. Okay, and of course, not just great barbecue, but you have a sauce for every kind of dad, right? So exactly. Let's, so let's go ahead and rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it. Okay, so we're gonna start here for your sweetheart of a dad. He's gonna love the sweet sauce. Aww. You gotta try it. If you want a little sweetness added to that smoky heat of your meat, put on some sweet sauce. Do you want to try that sweet sauce? It's, it's that first one first right one. there. Yeah, I'm on it. Let okay. us know what you think. A little extra sweet. It is sweet. That's it is good. sweet, right? Okay. It's really yummy. Okay, if dad is chill, mm -hmm. he just wants a relaxing Father's Day, why don't you try the mild sauce? The mild sauce is going to be perfect for dads who just want a little kick of something. Did you dip that one? Mm-hmm. What do you think it about it? It does have just a slight kick. Slight mm -hmm. kick. It's not like overpowering. Spicy. You're gonna want the next level up. Okay, so but let's. This is good if you like things mild, that's right. There you go. Let's talk okay. about that spicy dad. He wants All the right, next level, right? That right. spicy, saucy dad. He's gonna wanna go hot. Hot sauce right there. What do you think about the hot sauce? Oh, that has Michael Hayes written all over it. Mm -hmm. Hot. He, That's I, right. He's somewhere smelling smelling uh, our barbecue. I'm sure he's racing here because way. he saw that we have barbecue. You know he all is. Right. Safely and racing here. There you go. For really any dad, really anybody, they're going to love the Carolina sauce. This one is, it really goes great on anything. It's so delicious. I can eat that one by itself. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? Like a like a soup. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> now, you're gonna want to wash it sauce. down, right? And mm -hmm. that's when we're gonna get to talk about the freebie that every dad gets. Exactly. So dads, all you have to do is come to Barbecue and you're gonna get a free frozen Jack and Coke. Now let me tell you, these are delicious, and they're gonna put dad in a really good mood after he drinks one of these. You get a free one just for coming, just for being a dad, but you can also take home the gallon with you. So if you're doing a barbecue at home and you invited the whole family, get them some frozen Jack and Cokes. Everyone is gonna be happy this Father's Day. <laughs> And not just for the humans. Yeah, that's okay. Right. There's something for your four-legged friends. Exactly. We've got the whole family covered. So at Barbecue, we like to make sure that dogs are included. We have an outdoor patio where you can bring your dogs. They can enjoy playing, running around while you enjoy your barbecue. And if they get hungry, we've got a doggy menu as well. So we've got puppuccinos, we've got puppy platters, and I want to show you just a little bit of yes. what goes into it too. So if you want to celebrate your dog, all you need to do is add these ingredients you've got your cream and bacon bits they nice. eat that up you know they do and then of course they're gonna want some chicken and this is barbecue chicken so you know it's extra good and you're ready to go for that uh, doggy in your life Love it's just another it. treat for for the pups in your life as well all right yeah. and as Denise mentioned remember there is a patio mm -hmm. that kids can play and of course your fur-legged friends can enjoy as well. For more information on Barbecue Smokehouse, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link or just scan that QR code on your screen. All right, well, another fun celebration is happening this weekend. The oldest pet rescue in the city is turning, yeah, that's right, 88. 88 years old. Adam, he knows so much trivia, okay? They've got a big party planned and you're invited. Our Jen Tobias Strusky is out there on the north side with some of the stars of the event. Hey there, Jen. Yes, a party, right? Get it? Yes, we're having a great time over here at the Animal Defense League, and this cutie is Juju Fruit. Julie Healy joins me. I know she wants to run around and play, but we do have to keep her in our arms, right, yes. Julie? Yes, keep a hold of her. She's a wild woman. She's so cute. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, so she's adorable, and you can actually get her at a special price. We'll talk about that in a minute, but 88 years. Oh, my goodness. 88 years. We are so honored to be the oldest life-saving institution for pets in San Antonio. We turned 88 years old this weekend. We were founded in 1934. Wow, 1934. That is a very special number because if you come out starting today, like right now through Sunday, you can get any pet at that price, correct? Yes, 19 any pet, mm -hmm. $19.34. And that includes puppies like Junior <laughs> Fruit who are normally $200. Yes. In addition to that, everyone who adopts this weekend will be registered to win a, a Valero gas card for $190.34. Wow. Thanks to our friends at North Park Subaru. Wow, and lots of celebration behind us. You can see there is a lot of fun things going on too. You have a prize wheel. Uh, tell us about some of the other fun. We have lots of fun this weekend, so we ask everyone to come out. We're, we're open 11 to 7, Saturday and Sunday. But tomorrow on Saturday, we're going to have our big party. We're going to have a food truck. The first 88 people who join us will be able to get a free item. We've got manganadas, nachos, hot dogs, all kinds of fun stuff. And we're going to bust a pinata open at 1130 and it's full of candy. So bring your kids, come play with us, celebrate our birthday. Awesome. So you heard that right. Free food. Again, $19.34 for all the pets. Now, it wouldn't be a party without some fun and some cupcakes and some puppy cupcakes too. Canine cakes, right? That's right. <laughs> we're going to get our residents in on it and we're going to see who is more um, able to finish a cupcake in one bite. Is it man or dog? Are y'all ready? Let's bring our buddies up here. Okay. Bob Steady and Bebop. They've been here since December. They're ready to go home. They're ready for adoption. <laughs> on your marks, get set, go. <laughs> go, come on. You can eat it. Yeah, go right there for it. Oh yeah, this is good stuff here. I love the decorations and I love the puppy ears that they have on too. <laughs> I know we can do better than that. Come on guys, come on, we're rooting for you. Let's see who will finish it first. How are the dog food in the middle? How are our humans doing here? Let me see. <laughs> Go, James. <laughs> Again, this uh, you guys are at capacity too, right? We are at capacity. We've been at capacity. In fact, probably most of the shelters in town are at capacity. So really, we always tell the public the best thing that you can do for pets in need is adopt. Always adopt. There's so many pets that need loving homes, adult dogs as well as puppies. All right, who, do we have a winner? Oh, we have a winner! Right here. Oh, wonderful! Yay! And how are the dogs? Oh, this one? Does any of the dogs finish it yet? Well, okay, way to go! Okay, where's our crown? Great job! Still putting it on the dog. Okay, we're gonna give the dog a crown. Again, you can get that special price, $19.34. No, no, $19.34 right now through Sunday. He wants more cupcakes. Uh, anything else people should know before they come out here? We're open 11 to 7. We've got three locations. You can also browse all of our pets on the website at adltexas.org. All right. Well, ju uh, Juju Fruit. Juju fruit is Juju also baby. available, so she will be 50 pounds, right? She will be 50 pounds. She is a Labrador um, Shepherd mix, so lots of cute, lots of furry, ready to play with your kids. All right. Well, good job, everybody, humans and canines. <laughs> uh, we'll toss it back to you guys on great. set. All right. Say bye, Jen, Juju fruit. Jen, great job to you wrangling that very excited puppy, probably smelling all that yummy food, right? I know, I know. You're just as funny as Mike when he's here. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, still ahead on the show, there's still time to get something sweet for dad. When they're ready with last minute treats and some fun cupcake designs, you can do it yourself. But first, French inspired, a French inspired bar in Southtown is trying to do some good, how they're helping the families in Uvalde and how you can join the effort. It's all next on SA Live. 